Welcome to the TDK Ventures podcast with Patricia Krondai of Hitachi. She is the Director of Strategy and Business Development with the Corporate Venturing Office of Hitachi and is based in Switzerland. In this podcast, we will be exploring the best practices in corporate venture capital to enable engagements between the startup companies that the CVC invests in and the parent conglomerate. Welcome, Patricia, and thank you for being on the podcast. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be at Hitachi. Yes, thanks. Wonderful to be here. So I have a strategy and finance background, and I started out with Hitachi in Silicon Valley, actually in California, where they needed someone uh, who was non-technical but could develop an open innovation ecosystem for them. And then I was asked to build Hitachi's corporate incubator, which is actually building startups from the inside of Hitachi, fully focused only on the on green digital solutions. And I run everything sort of non-product for that incubator that we built up. And then I was asked, I was rolled into sort of co- corporate venturing uh, because I, I simultaneously moved to Europe. Um, the corporate venturing office was uh, building up um, their team, both in Europe and in the, the green solution space. So that's when I joined our corporate venturing unit more than a year ago, while I had already naturally been exposed to the startup ecosystem since I started with Hitachi, which was six years ago. Interesting. It'll be good to provide viewers some context about Hitachi as well as Hitachi Ventures. TDK and TDK Ventures, it's also a Japanese conglomerate and a Japanese CVC. So let us know what is the focus of your parent conglomerate where is your BD office located in? Is the BD office with the CVC or is it with the parent Hitachi? Yes, happy to do that. So Hitachi is like a, a typical Japanese conglomerate in the sense that we we are really spread across multiple industries. You can't really pin us down into one. Our largest business units really are in the energy space with the acquisition of ABB Power Grids a few years ago, we acquired a lot of energy assets and businesses. We do a lot in, in rail and mobility. We also do automotive. We do large industrial equipment. And we it's one of the best kept secrets, but Hitachi is the seventh largest technology provider in the world. So we also do, other than the pure sort of hardware, deep tech, we also provide a lot of uh, software solutions. Now, in terms of the sort of setup of our corporate venturing office versus also Hitachi Ventures, I can explain a little bit. Um, Hitachi Ventures is our investment arm. It's a separate legal entity. They are uh, looking at the, the pure sort of CVC investments into startups where they take minority stakes. They are uh, located and headquartered out of Munich, but they have uh, also offices in Boston, in uh, Silicon Valley. And those are the main uh, three locations uh, that they operate out of. Then the CVO office is a another unit that was actually built to be a bridge between Hitachi Ventures and our business units, because the main objective is still to create strategic growth for both startups as well as Hitachi and that can only be done by also connecting the startups with our internal business units and to see what kind of opportunities we can leverage there and so the CVO office uh, was initially a startup at the same time as our fund four years ago out of Tokyo because that's where a lot of our main business units are still headquartered but over the years we saw also a lot of interest from a non-Japanese business unit so now we have a European office that I'm part of, and we're virtual. In, in, so we have colleagues in London, in, in Switzerland, in, in, in France. And then we have an office in Silicon Valley as well, with a few people who are, are very much focused on the digital side. And in Europe, we're very focused on the green topics. And our assets under management 
for our ventures team are six around 600 million they have just launched uh, their third fund of uh, no. 300 million i'll come up to the AUM in a little okay. while but yeah. i just wanted to uh, circle back to your uh, business development uh, group or the CVO office that you had mentioned, which you are part of. Yeah. So um, Hitachi has had multiple acquisitions in the past uh, few years. And so you do have a presence in Europe, but you also have a presence in uh, USA. Yes, we have uh, quite a large Hitachi America group as well with a number of subsidiaries. And then, of course, also in the rest of Asia, other than Japan, we also have uh, quite a few uh, business units and businesses. We're truly global, a truly global company, I would say. I see. And so the CVO, the Corporate Venturing Office, uh, which is tasked with being a bridge between the investment, CVC, and the parent, do you also have people in more to cover all of these geographies? Yeah, so, so we don't have representatives in all geographies because we feel we can cover as a virtual team quite a large geography and we also invest globally. And so our startups are also located in many different regions. We also look very much at where let's say the main priorities and expertise lies. So where are the headquarters located? For example, Hitachi Energy is headquartered in Switzerland, but we have a lot of our digital businesses are headquartered in the US. And so we've rather mapped our team according to some of these more, let's say, industry focus or sector focused areas rather than geography. Got it. So that is the distribution of the corporate venturing offers. Now, switching focus to the corporate venturing investment teams, the CVC part, where are the team members for the CVC located and where is the headquarters office? So the headquarters is in Munich. And then there is an office in Boston and also an office in Santa Clara in Silicon Valley. And those are our physical locations. Okay. And what is the focus area of investments? Does it enable investments in areas that are the current focus of the parent Hitachi, or does it look for investments in areas that are a little more in the bleeding edge of technology? Yeah, so it's both. And so we can make investments and we do in main themes that are of interest to Hitachi at the moment, like green and digital and healthcare also. But then there's also been investments to open up new markets for us, let's say in a little bit further down the road in the future. And so it's, it's actually a mix. Of course, the investments we make are very strongly aligned with our energy and mobility business, our industrial focus in IT and health. So that's definitely where we are uh, most active, I would say. What is the, can you explain a little bit about the funds that you have uh, and how many portfolios have you invested uh, since the beginning of Hitachi Ventures? Yeah, so we're on our third fund. Our initial fund was 150 million focused on more across the board, more generic, let's say. Then we had a second fund, again, 150 million, focused very strongly on the green topics. And now in June of this year, we launched our third fund for 300 million. So a total of 600 million under management, which has actually a focus very strongly on digital, but still also including a lot of green topics as well. The investments, that we have made are 23 so far since the launch four or five years ago. And the main sort of stages that the fund is focusing on is, is from series A to C. And the average ticket size is between two to 10 million. And uh, we both lead our, our follow on. Yeah. I see. 
So you lead the investments, you follow on the investments, and your investment swim lanes are focused on the areas of interest for the parent. How many portfolios do you have out of your three funds? And where are the portfolios located in? Since your second fund, you said, was very green focused. Are most of your startups based in Europe coming out of that fund? Uh, what is the distribution of your uh, different port portfolios in terms of geography? So we have made uh, 23 uh, investments, really across a sort of a, a number of topics. So IT, smart life, industrial industry focus, as well as sort of new frontiers, we call it. So those are the, the topics that are a little bit further out in the future for our parent company. And, and then as well as environment. And so I don't know the, the exact uh, split of the geographies between the different uh, types of uh, portfolios that we have, but I would say it's, it's fairly um, balanced between Europe uh, and North America. About your, uh, the corporate venturing, the CDC, when they invest in these areas, how do they look in terms of the engagement? Do they focus more on the financial aspects of the return that can potentially be had? Do they also factor in the potential synergies that can be had with uh, Hitachi? And is there a greater focus on one or the other? So we look at both financial and strategic value. We do uh, really value the future synergies that we can create with our portfolio companies. It's very important for us because we want to drive mutual both uh, growth for both parties. And so that is definitely a factor before we make an investment that, that there are potentially some business units interested to collaborate or that there is uh, future potential now on the some of the topics like new frontiers that might be a little bit further out uh, but that doesn't mean that we are not working towards a common goal um, for that it's also maybe important to mention here is that we don't only look at the startup in its own uh, let's say container we often look at the, the startup also as part of a larger ecosystem and so we want to also then expand those relationships and make those connections so the strategic value there is extremely important for us that is very interesting could you expand a little bit more about how you enable this ecosystem collaboration is it through investments or is it through partnerships with other uh, potential partners in the ecosystem that the parent corporation may be working with if you could highlight it with an example or two it would be very helpful Yes, so it's mostly through partnerships. So many of the current business that Hitachi operates on is very much from an ecosystem type of perspective or approach. For example, in, in supply chain or in, in batteries, we don't just look at offering one solution in, in a container, but we look really at the full value chain of, of batteries. And so therefore, when there are startups that could fit into that play, we often make those connections then either with some of our partners or if we're working already with some customers, with some potential customers, and to really test that, that full value chain capability that we're interested to build. Hey, but that's very interesting. So could you walk me through the process once an investment has happened say the cdc team has invested in a interesting startup and now that has come on board as a portfolio company how do you enable synergies with the mothership what is the role of the business unit from the corporates that is the parent in engaging with the portfolios and how large is your uh, bd team hmm. our bd team it's about 20 people in total, so with still the majority being in, in Japan. And our role is really to really understand the strategic priorities of the BU as much as possible. So our key liaisons are, for example, the strategy people for more of the sort of road mapping and, and uh, longer term perspective. 
But we've also found uh, specifically the product owners are very, very eager to, to either accelerate their product roadmap or reduce their time to market with a new feature or product, or sometimes they already have some actual RFPs or bids where they are lacking some technology or other capability that they need in order for us to, uh, to bid for something. And so those types of people are informing us, we are looking for this, these are our priorities, and then it's our role to match that with our portfolio. Sometimes it's with portfolio companies that we've had for already a number of years. Sometimes it's with new portfolio companies that obviously we meet very regularly with the Itachi Ventures team. So when a new portfolio is brought in, we get a full rundown of sort of their value propositions, their capabilities, their interests as well. And not all startups want to go to Japan or work with specific types of businesses. And then we pretty much showcase that in meetings or when we have sort of these discussions of where we can support. So that's really a communication channel that we are for spreading the new additions to our portfolio. So when the BUs engage with either the new portfolios or with the more established ones, are there incentives? I was just curious, are there incentives for the BU members to engage with the portfolio or is it out of their own curiosity and that wanting to move the business along the more cutting edge directions? Hmm. It's both actually, but our BUs are incentivized to, to collaborate with our portfolio companies. We do highlight that as well. So it's very sort of visible type of work and collaborations. And then obviously from either commercial incentive or technology development incentive, it's encouraged also to, to work with our portfolio companies. And naturally, there is, of course, our R&D group as well. And even they are very keen uh, to see how they can engage with some of the portfolio companies to also augment or supplement the work that they're doing. And what about mergers and acquisitions? Is there such a group in the parent? And is that different? from the work that uh, your group is doing? Yes, we don't uh, do any m and in my group. And so each uh, business unit has its own uh, sort of m and uh, team. Uh, so Hitachi Energy would have their m and team or Hitachi Digital would have their m and team. So uh, it's a separate function as well. It's more near-term focused. We don't interact on a regular basis at the moment. It's really interesting that you mentioned that the corporate BUs are very keen on engaging with the portfolios and also that the R&D teams are very interested in interacting with the portfolios. In your experience, since you have worked with uh, so many BUs, do you see a split in the R&D teams being more eager to interact with the portfolios versus the BUs or do you see any such differences at all? No, I don't see a very large difference in that. Definitely, it, it depends also on the sort of stage of maturity that the portfolio company is in. Because for the BUs, it works better if it's a little bit later stage, let's say, in terms of that there is some commercially available solution. While for the R&D, they are more open to an earlier stage technology to sort of pile it together. And so maybe that's the only difference that I see. And what, in your opinion, is a successful engagement with the mothership? How do you go about any engaging with a parent corporation after a portfolio comes on board? For us, a, a successful engagement would be that uh, the startup would be collaborating with one of our business units, whether it's a pilot or already 
uh, go to market or an RFP that they collaborate on. But then that sort of ultimately leads to both businesses, our portfolio company, as well as our business units to grow at commercially because we want to create value for, of course, both sides. And so that means ultimately some top line growth or some successful pilot projects or customer projects. And that would be success for us. I see. So do do these kind of engagements and uh, start with, uh, say, an evaluation project or a joint development agreement or a pilot? And what can you tell us about these kind of paid projects? So these, these are often, we make the introduction between the business unit and the portfolio company. And from there on, they have several workshops to look at what the possibilities could be. And then it takes quite, it can take quite different shapes or forms, but it's, it's really the BU then who leads that uh, sort of partnership, the portfolio company, and they decide how they want to structure it, what are the either the financing behind that, the outcomes and how that should be measured. I see that brings me to the next question, which is a difficult challenge that we have in our roles, which are quite similar. How do you track engagements over time? Because as the investment team continues to invest out of their funds, the number of portfolio keeps growing. And each portfolio may have multiple engagements ongoing with the BUs uh, located geographically in various locations. And for each portfolio company, the engagement stage may be different with the different BUs. Tracking the engagements over time can be challenging. We do that quarterly by uh, cross-checking both with the BUs as well as with the startup companies. So do you have any such formal process in place to track the engagements? Yes, we do. We also track uh, pretty much, I would say, rolling with our team uh, and when we do speak with the BUs, but mostly within our team where introductions have been made, to what stage they've progressed. We have key points of contact for the BUs as well. And so uh, that makes it a little bit more centralized. And that's how we track the portfolio companies and how they are faring in the, let's say, Hitachi ecosystem. What are the other things that you do to keep this ecosystem in connect? For example, do you bring all of the BU point of contact that are engaging with the portfolios together for any conference or workshop? Do you do the same with your portfolio companies? We recently had a portfolio summit, which we put together uh, last month, and we had 21 of our portfolios attended. And we also had a senior corporate leadership that had participated in it. Uh, and it was very eye-opening for us in the sense that the portfolios could talk to each other and discuss similar challenges that they may face, either in scaling or in sourcing certain components that they may have from similar vendors and also in discussing how they overcame certain challenges in their startup journey. So so startup journey challenges tend to be similar, although the area of focus may be different. Also, some of our own business groups started as startups in a way and they grew to be very successful. So we found that it was very useful for our portfolio companies to hear that startup journey and how they have scaled to the current stage within a large organization like PDK. So I was just curious to know, in your case, do you enable any such interactions? Not yet, but I love the idea that you just gave. We have been fairly young still in that sense <clears throat> that we just opened up the new regions in North America and Europe for our CVO office physically. So that happened only after COVID. And uh, therefore we have been focused 
more, more on, we call it innovation marketing. So it's a tiny bit broader than maybe corporate venturing, where we bring the business units together physically in one location and we highlight some of the startups and portfolio companies. It, and by the way, it doesn't have to be necessarily a portfolio company to, to be part of Hitachi's ecosystem. We also source startups, let's say, together even with our ventures team, if it, the company is maybe not the right investment, but we see a partnership opportunity, we also work on that. And so we showcase some of these examples and so we've been focused on those two regions at the moment, but I would love to expand it to, to the concept that you just described. What you mentioned just now about uh, showcasing not just our portfolio companies, but also those that the ventures team may not invest in, but the parent finds uh, as a potential customer or a partner. I find that interesting because we do a similar thing here because what we have seen is that of the huge number of startups that come our way, not all may be venture investable in the sense that they will provide a venture-like return. But that doesn't mean that the startup cannot engage with the parent. In fact, some of those later stage startups may be very ideal for engaging with the partner. And so it's interesting for me to know that you have a similar system. Moving away from startups and from portfolio companies that your CVC has invested in, I just was curious to know how you enable engagements in the ecosystem with your channel partners and whether such a channel partner engagement is easier or more difficult than working with your portfolios. Yeah, good question. So I don't know if it's much easier or more difficult because what we do is we do that very targeted. So we would know that, let's say, channel partner, and we are look, working on a certain model or a certain sort of a collaboration. And we, we then identify potential partners that can be smaller companies, like startups, can be also larger companies. And then we bring that in. Normally, when you have more than one party, it is a bit more complicated because there's just different agendas and objectives sometimes that need to be matched. But I also have seen uh, quite a fast engagement because there was this sort of really immediate need that was identified by us or with our partners sometimes. It really fit in nicely and, and it's worked from the start. It really depends, I would say, in terms of a success rate and difficulty. I see. What has been something in your journey in the CV office that has surprised you the most or you have found personally very satisfying you could share with us? For me, it's been a really fantastic to support, specifically in the green space, because it's by not only helping from a commercial perspective, but Ultimately, the goal is also to reduce emissions and help our customers decarbonize. That's really what we are after as Hitachi is in our sustainability offerings to really help our customers decarbonize. And I find it it's really rewarding to <clears throat> open up Hitachi's ecosystem to companies who have fantastic technology or fantastic teams, but lack the scale of such a large company and to provide that matchmaking. Yeah. I think that's extremely satisfying because it only speeds things up and it really uses the, the best of, of all worlds and the best of the technology that is available. So I think that has been my most interesting and, and gratifying moments. That is indeed so very true. And with that, we have more or less come to the conclusion of our interview, I wanted to know whether there are any best practices or golden nuggets from your journey that you would like to share with the CVC community, especially as a deep tech CVC practitioner and also as a woman in a deep tech CVC that can inspire others considering this path. Yeah, so that's a, that's a really big question, but I love it. 
so for me, for us, what has been really helpful in is in really becoming this trusted business partner for the business units. And we never only put, let's say, a list of interesting startups or portfolio companies in front of them. We really think with them about potential plays around strategy, around maybe ecosystem development. So I think taking uh, that little bit of a, a broader uh, point of view has, has really helped to establish those relationships that then created some of the great collaborations ultimately with some of the portfolio companies. So that has been one of my takeaways. I come from consulting, so that, that role was natural for me to take. And as a woman, I don't think I have specific advice. It's definitely, we're definitely still a minority. And I do encourage everyone to speak up with, about any insights or perspective that you see as a woman in deep tech, because still everyone comes from different backgrounds and has inspiring ideas, maybe look at different uh, businesses from a different angle or for example, when we just started out in green, I had to be often the one who said, but what's really the environmental impact or what's the diversity of the founding team? So questions that maybe I think of that maybe some of my other colleagues don't. So I, I do believe raising all of those points is really important to come either to a good investment decision or a good collaboration. And I think we need really diverse teams to tackle these really complex challenges that we're working on. Definitely inspire everyone to, to raise those points and also explore careers in uh, corporate venturing. Thank you, Patricia. That is truly a wonderful takeaway that sometimes having women in the team brings slightly different perspective that adds to the value. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Very appreciative of the discussions that we have had, and hopefully this will shed some light on the best practices for engaging with a parent uh, in the area of CVC venture investments. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thanks, Gita.